scorching summer, taking a dip in cool, salty water or a stroll along the shore are things we love to do. But have you ever stopped to observe the constant motion of the water along the shore? Well, here's your chance as we explore the exciting topic of coastal processes. You will see how dynamic the coast is as material moves up on the shore and then out to sea. This continuous process has the potential to build up a shoreline or erode it. This area, which is known as the coast, is a zone of interaction between the sea and the land. Here they meet and overlap and it is here that sea currents and winds act on the land to form distinct landforms. As you stand on the shore of a beach and watch the waves tumble towards you, you will observe several things. The waves are being formed by wind blowing across the water surface. And as the wind gets stronger, the waves become more powerful. As the wave approaches the coast, it becomes steeper and an oscillatory or rotating movement becomes more evident. When the wave reaches shallow water, the top of the wave called the crest plunges forward on the shore and the waveform collapses. While lying on the shore, you may also notice that after the wave breaks, a rush of water is thrown forward on the beach and then this water returns to the sea. The body of water that rushes upon the shore is called the swash, while the return is known as the backwash. The strength of the swash and the backwash on the shore, together with other characteristics, distinguish the difference between a destructive and constructive waveform. So the types of waves that approach the coastline are not the same. Remember, there are two types, constructive and destructive. The characteristics that distinguish these two waveforms from each other include wave frequency. This is the rate at which waves break on the shore. Wave height. This is the distance between the top of the wave, which is called the crest, and the lowest part of the wave, the trough. Wave length. This is the distance between two consecutive crests. Steepness and gradient of the land. This is the slope of the sea shelf as it approaches the shore. Look at these two wave motions. The first is the constructive wave and the other a destructive wave. How do the two differ? Did you notice that the first wave type, the constructive wave, approached the shore much slower than the destructive wave? The slow speed of the wave determines the waveform's low frequency of between 6 and 8 waves per minute. The speed also influences a constructive wave's long wavelength. The wave also had a small wave height, that is, a short length between crest and trough. Constructive waves commonly have a height of less than 2 meters. When the constructive waves break against the shore, their crest, that is, the top of the wave, spills over. Because of this, they can be referred to as spilling waves. The gradient of the coast slope is also far gentler where constructive waves are present. Due to the gentle gradient, the swash is more powerful than the backwash. This encourages the buildup of materials on the beach. On the other hand, destructive waves are called plunging breakers because they plunge when breaking and they break violently as they approach a steeply sloping beach. The destructive wave's length is also noticeably shorter than the constructive wave's wavelength. This is because the waves approach the shore more rapidly. 
This rapid approach also means that the wave frequency is higher than its counterpart, with over 12 waves per minute. The wave height is also much higher, being over 2 meters. Given that the slope of the beach is steep, the backwash is much more powerful and because of this, it drags materials from the beach. The sheer power and action of the backwash of destructive waves may destroy the land and cause it to retreat over time. As a result, a person who builds their house on such a coastline may become homeless in a number of years due to constant undercutting of the waves by the land. Let's take a moment to review. Waves are formed by the wind moving over the surface of the water. The stronger the wind, the more powerful the waves. The body of the water that rushes onto the shore after a wave crashes onto land is the swash. The body of water that returns to the sea is the backwash. There are two types of waves, constructive and destructive, and they are differentiated by their frequency, height, wavelength, and the steepness, and determined by the gradient of the land.